Good morning, welcome to church this morning on this third Sunday in Advent. What a beautiful setting uh, which we have together in this morning and I hope that the service will be a great blessing to you. In our sermon time today, we're continuing this theme of A Day Is Coming and today's title is Where Is That Coming? Dealing with scoffers who say, well, hang on, he hasn't come back yet, where is he? We open with this beautiful song, God Is for us because if God is for us no one can be against us The Bible tells us to approach God confidently through our Lord Jesus Christ. As we do so, we must confess our sins, seeking God's forgiveness through his boundless goodness and mercy. So let us draw near to God with sincerity and with confidence and pray together. God of all mercy, we humbly admit that we need your help. We have wandered from your way. We have sinned in thought, word and deed and have failed to do what is right. You alone can save us. Have mercy on us. Wipe out our sins and teach us to forgive others. Bring forth in us the fruit of your Spirit, that we may live the new life to your glory. This we ask in the name of Jesus our Saviour. Amen. God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. We give thanks to you, Lord. 
for you are good. Your steadfast love never ceases. What love could we remember? No wrongs we have done. Omniscient, all knowing, he counts not their son. Thrown into a sea without bottom or shore. Our sins, they are many, his mercy is more. Praise the Lord, His mercy is more. Stronger than darkness, new every morning. Our sins, they are many, His mercy is more. What patience could we? to the Bible readings, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word, which is able to make us wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Through your breathed out word, please teach us, rebuke us, correct us, and train us in righteousness so that we will be thoroughly equipped for every good work. For Jesus' sake. Amen. A reading from 2 Peter Chapter 3, verses 1 to 10. Dear friends, this is now my second letter to you. I have written both of them as reminders to stimulate you to wholesome thinking. I want you to recall the words spoken in the past by the holy prophets and the command given by our Lord and Saviour through your apostles. Above all, you must understand that in the last days, scoffers will come, scoffing and following their own evil desires. They will say, where is this coming, he promised. Ever since our ancestors died, everything goes on since, it has the, since the beginning of creation. But they deliberately forget that long ago, by God's word, the heavens came into being and the earth was formed out of water and by water. By these water, waters also, the world of that time was deluged and destroyed. 
by the same word, the present heavens and earth are reserved for fire, being kept for the day of judgment and the destruction of the ungodly. But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the day, with the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar, the elements will be destroyed by fire, and the earth and everything done in it will be laid bare. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There's a story of a finance broker who was cleaning out his attic one day and suddenly a genie appeared, offered him one wish. He, the wish that he asked for was to see the financial pages in a year's time. The wish was granted. He read with great interest, no pun intended, all the stories of the stock markets, etc. in a year from now. As he was turning the page over, the paper over to put it down, he was confronted with his own obituary. Sometimes I wish that there was something that would shock us into the reality that we are only temporary in this earth. Knowing that life will end in a year changes things. I recall when Susan's mother was dying quite young age. She died at 49. Um, she was completing her tax return and she was answering that question. Do you expect that this will be your last return? And if so, why? And she just simply put it down. Um, yeah, this will be my last return because I'm dying confronted with the reality of your mortality. The testimony of those who've been through life, uh, near life death experiences or been resuscitated or rescued from the brink of death say that it changes their life forever. It, it inverts values for them. Everything that they thought was important somehow seems no longer important and the things that they thought didn't matter now matter to them. My brothers and sisters in Christ, I sometimes wish that we could have a really big fright Something to shock us into the reality that this world we live in is only temporary. Something to shock us into the realisation that the material things we value so highly will one day all be gone. Something to shock us into the reality that Jesus could come back at any minute. And something that, we might, something that might happen to us that might completely reorganise our lives. Having finally seen once and for all what is truly important. Well, our passage this morning is really designed to do just that, to confront us with the certainty of the reality that this world will definitely come to an end. We're spending Advent looking at the reality that a day is coming. A week one, a day is coming with the result that we will be with the Lord forever. Last week, a day is coming, but we don't know when. And this week, a day is coming and the subtitle is, well, where is this coming? Uh, dealing with the scoffers. The scoffers who say, look, this day is never coming. We might as well give up and live as we want. There are two simple points to make the, um, from this passage this morning from 2 Peter 3, which I hope you'll have open in front of you. And they both are around the theme of forgetting. So here's the first one. Scoffers forget. Scoffers forget. And then... Peter's exhortation to us, don't you forget. Scoffers forget, don't you forget. Very simple outline. Before we get to that first point, however, I want you to notice from the first two verses what Peter's aim is in, in writing. Have a look with me at verse 2. I want you to recall the words spoken in the past by the holy prophets and the command given by our Lord and Saviour through your apostles. In other words, he wants them to know what their prophets said our Old Testament. And he also wants them to know what Jesus had told them through Jesus himself and the apostles, our New Testaments. He wants them to know what has already been taught to them. Friends, I want you to know your Bibles. The Lord has spoken to us through his prophets, through the Saviour, through the apostles. We need to sit up, take notice and know our Bibles. And I 
not only on this whole topic of a day that is to come, which was Peter's focus here, but wisdom the Bible will give us for facing trials, for dealing with temptation, for giving us wisdom in decisions, for perseverance when the going gets tough, for facing death. I want to encourage you to make 2021 the year that you aim to get to know your Bible better. We want to help you to do that and we'll offer different ways of doing that. Because as you get to know your Bible better, you will grow ever more in your love for God and in your trust in His sovereign purposes. Okay, now let's get to that first point. Scoffers forget. We can understand, can't we, that uh, people would scoff at the claim of Jesus' return. Uh, Verse 4, they will say, where is this coming, he promised. Ever since our ancestors died, everything goes on as it has since the beginning of creation. In other words, there's no difference. Everything just keeps going. There's no coming. There's nothing indicated. Have you had people say, say something like that to you? Where is this coming back of Jesus that you talk about? Where is this God of yours? Or in recent years, they might have said to you, how come he didn't stop this catastrophe of COVID-19? Or where was he when the bushfires were raging? Or why didn't he send rain the first time you asked him instead of waiting years and years so that we'd go broke in the meantime in the drought? Where is this God? Plenty of people scoffing one way or another at all that we value and treasure in our relationship with the Lord. From the very existence to God, to the cases of abuse in the church that we've had to confront in recent years. So Peter is so upfront about the scoffers. Notice in verse 3 where they're coming from. They're about following their own evil desires, he says. Scoff about God and then you'll believe your own rhetoric and then live life as you please. That's how it goes. And then in verse 5, do you see? He says they deliberately forget. Deliberately forget. That is, they cast things right out of their mind. That is, many might have come from a position where they absolutely knew the truth about God and about Jesus, about his love, about how they should be responding to his love and mercy, but they deliberately forget because they want to live life following their own evil desires. So they deliberately forget all that they've learned and known, and therefore that lets them off the hook. Or so they think. Like Paul saying in Romans 1, isn't it? That they suppress the truth about God. That their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. Here in 2 Peter 3, have a look with me at verse 5. We read specifically that they deliberately forget that long ago, God's word, the heaven, uh, that by God's word, the heavens came into being and the earth was formed out of water and by water. They forget God created the world. And then... They forget that by these waters also the world of that time was deluged and destroyed. That is that there was a flood, God's judgment on a rebellious people. And then in verse 7, they forget that by the same word, the present heavens and earth are reserved for fire, being kept for the day of judgment and the destruction of the ungodly. That's a lot to forget. Creation, flood, and the judgment at the end of time. But note, and make sure you remember, The present heavens and earth are reserved for fire, being kept for the day of judgment and the destruction of the ungodly. That's the reality. They can forget all they like, but that's the reality. And he enlarges on this in verse 10. Have a look with me. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire and earth and everything done in it will be laid bare. Uh, Friends, all that we see here is temporary. As a fire goes through a forest, And you can see through the trees that were completely covered in foliage before. But now you can see right through them to the perhaps to the mountains on the other side. Just like that. At the end of time, everything will be laid bare. Everything that has ever been ever been done will be seen for what it is. A day is coming. And that day will mean the end of heavens and earth now that we inhabit confronting and and we're and we're hushed too aren't we by the words the destruction of the ungodly those who have followed their own desires and have deliberately forgotten will suddenly find themselves getting what they have desired they've desired to be without God and in the end that's where they'll find themselves without 
God. Scoffers forget, but it will have a deadly consequence. So Peter comes back very strongly to us in verse 8, and this is our second point. Don't you forget. Have a look with me at verse 8. But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Are you tempted to wonder where Jesus coming in is as well? Don't forget, he says, that God works on a very different time scale to us. We are in time, he is out of time, he is in eternity. God's timing is completely different to ours. One day is like a thousand years, a thousand years are like a day. But the point is this, it's now been around 2,000 years since Jesus left us. But for the God of eternity who operates out of our sphere of time, that is not a long time. But why any delay anyway? Oh friends, this is so precious. Don't miss this. He is giving more and more people more and more time to repent, verse 9. Why the delay? More time for people to come to him. Although we just learned that when the end comes, it will mean the destruction of the ungodly, here we learn that God is incredibly patient with the ungodly, with those who deliberately forget. He's giving them time to remember. Time to turn from their own evil desires back to him. Every day, every week, every year longer before Jesus returns is more opportunity for your friends, for your family to come back to Christ. Isn't this a lovely picture? You've heard me say this before, but there's a great amnesty on at present. And anyone who repents now can find forgiveness and eternal life. The Lord is patiently waiting for more and more people to take up his gracious offer. So yes, he will come like a thief in the night, as we learnt last week. Unexpectable, unpredictable, unmistakable. But in the meantime, until that day comes, the God who doesn't want anyone to perish is holding off that day because he's giving more opportunity for people to come to repentance. How wonderful. You know, it may be that there are some watching today who have been scoffing. You've thought to yourself, maybe commented to somebody else, where is this Jesus? Ah, it's all rubbish. He's never coming back. And because you've concluded that, you've been following your own evil desires, living life without God, deliberately forgetting that God said that there was a flood, that there would be a flood and there was. Deliberately forgetting that Jesus said he was coming back and he will. And you've been putting God and Jesus out of your mind, out of your heart, content to go it alone. But now, perhaps, you just heard me say that the Lord is patient, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. And perhaps it is that you realize that you've been deliberately forgetting, putting out of your mind what you actually know in your heart of hearts is the truth. Perhaps you've actually missed God in your life, missed the reality of his love, missed the comfort of his presence. And perhaps if you're honest, you're tired of doing life without him, managing on your own. And if he's patient and wanting people to come to repentance, then Perhaps today is the day to take him up on this offer. Wouldn't that, wouldn't that be a wonderful thing? Today is the day to do it because, because we don't know when he's coming back. Remember, it'll come like a thief of the night. And then the amnesty will suddenly be over. Will you come back today? Come back to Jesus? All you need to do is to say, Sorry. Sorry for following your own evil desires. Sorry for deliberately forgetting. Please forgive me. That's all you need to say. 
And if you do that, then on the basis of Jesus' life, death and resurrection, you will be completely forgiven. And when Jesus comes, instead of him saying, I don't know you, he will say, welcome. Welcome to my eternal home. Two points today. Scoffers forget. Don't you forget. Any scoffers watching, scoff no more. Come return to the Lord your God. And as for everybody else, don't you forget. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise of his return, but he's just giving more and more people time to come back to him. Praise him for his grace and mercy and that beautiful patience. And do all you can to in Encourage more scoffers back to him. Amen. Let's now come and affirm our faith together. We believe in one God who made and loves all that is. We believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was born, lived, died and rose again, and is coming to call all to account. We believe in the Holy Spirit, who calls, equips, and sends out God's people, and brings all things to their true end. This is our faith, the faith of the Church. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray in response to the message. Heavenly Father, even as we look forward to the great day coming when Jesus will return, we know that there are many people who scoff at such a thought and follow their own evil desires. They deliberately forget the reality that when Jesus comes, he will come with judgment. Thank you that any delay in Jesus coming is only due to your patience in wanting to give people time to repent and come back to you. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your grace and patience. We pray that many will take up the opportunity to return to you while they can. And may we, your people, never forget your kindness and your love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. For Christmas celebrations. Loving Lord, we know that Christmas will be very different for many people this year. Different because some family members have died through COVID or other reasons through the year. Different because some families are not able to gather as they normally would. Different because of the restrictions we face even in gathering for church. Yet we pray that in the midst of these challenges, and perhaps even because of them, we might concentrate our hearts and minds on the true meaning of Christmas. May the changes we face cause us to consider the reality of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, who though he was rich, yet for our sakes became poor, so that we through his poverty might become rich. May our Christmas celebrations this year draw us ever closer to you in love and wonder and awe and praise. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. For our world. Loving Lord, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, hear our prayer for our world. We grieve and are burdened by all that we regularly see on our TVs and read in various news feeds. What a mess our world is in. Leadership in many nations which is self-serving and corrupt. Civil unrest and violence out of control. Out and out war in some places which has been raging for years. Persecution of Christians in many places where believers are targeted and killed. Have mercy on our world which has turned its back on you. Have mercy on our world and soften hearts to the truth of who Jesus is. Have mercy on our world and raise up more gospel workers to share the good news. Have mercy on our world and help us to do all we can to point people to our hope, Jesus Christ our Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. And for those who are sick and struggling today. God of compassion and power, 
we pray for all those who are doing it tough today. For the lost, the lonely, the outcast, the depressed, the anxious, the chronically ill, for those in constant pain, and for those nearing death. Please, Lord, intervene in their lives to bring hope and strength and comfort, and where it please you, healing. May they know you as their refuge and draw strength from your strength. All this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Well, friends, just as we finish, I wanted to let you know about our Lenten studies next year. Under the heading Faulty People, Faultless Saviour, we're going to be doing six character studies of people in the New Testament. And three gifted, um, able women speakers will speak about three women and three able men about three men. The three women, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of our Lord, and the woman at the well. And the three men, James, Nicodemus, and Thomas. So I want you to be thinking now about who you might gather in a small group to watch the video and then share in the discussion afterwards. I really want to commend that opportunity to you and ask that you might begin to make plans now for those Lenten studies. Well, as we finish today, we're reminded um, that our relationship with God is built on trust. And here's the chorus of this beautiful City of Light song. Jesus, only Jesus, help me trust you more and more.
Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we want to thank you again for your incredible patience with people who want to do their own thing, who scoff about your coming and who just want to live life without you. And yet you are incredibly patient with them, wanting them to come back to you in repentance and trust. So may that be true even today as people watch this video. And may we be a blessing and a help to other scoffers who we can help back into relationship with you. And now as we go into this week, may God's blessing of Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with us, be with you and remain with you always. Amen.